So, got the body of my starlet here, not too far away from uh, getting it ready to, to put as a primer. But I've got one last thing to modify on it, and I thought it'd be it'd make a good video. So, um, you might have just seen my video about fixing all the rust. So that's all done. And yeah, like I say, one last major thing to do, which is cut the tunnel above the diff. Now uh, it's already been done. Actually, I did it oh, a few years ago, um, but since I put the big F-series diff in it, it's now not high enough again. So, um, so I'll be cutting what's what's there out and remaking it to suit. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward, but I guess it can be pretty daunting as well. Um, good to do it when the car's stripped like this. Um, normally you're doing it with, when there's interior and stuff in the car, which is just a bit of a mission trying to, trying to keep everything clean and not get grinding everywhere. But um, and also with this being on the rotisserie, I can I can flip it over and get to the underside. So be a bit easier in this body, but um, principle still the same with doing it. So run you through that. Um, this it's a really common modification that you need to do to especially to well to old cars but things with live axles <clears throat> um, just when you lower them a lot or put a big diff or both um, the floor around the diff head is normally always in the way so so yeah cut it up to give, give it the travel it needs and um, not have the drive shaft hitting the floor so yeah sit back and take a watch so this is what I'm talking about the uh, the drive shaft tunnel um, in front of the diff head really and sort of the area above the nose of the diff so as you can see I've done this before like I said so I'm uh, going to cut this completely out raise it up a little bit I'm not sure if you've seen the video there's a little bit of a mark there where the diff flange was, was hitting since I put the bigger diff in it um, there's a few things to think about when you when you do this uh, in this car I've I want to, I, mean, I am keeping the back seat, so I need to be aware that I can't make this tunnel massively high because then the seat's not going to fit. Um, doesn't matter too much if the seat um, is hitting a little bit. I can modify the frame of the seat a little bit, but I don't want to go too overboard. So if it's a race car or a car where you're having no interior, then you can go for gold. doesn't really matter what you do, but um, <clears throat> being a road car or being a car with a seat, you need a bit of consideration there. Uh, and this, so this has got a two-piece drive shaft in it since I put the J160 gearbox in it and the F-Series. So sometimes it, you actually need to raise the tunnel the entire way up to the back of the gearbox. But in this I don't need to, it's just the back half that matters. So I'm not having to worry about that cross member there. Sometimes you will have to cut that up. Um, and a big thing to remember is if you're cutting this sort of stuff up, uh, I think you're fine to cut cut up whatever but just make sure you're putting in the same amount of strength or probably more when you rebuild it so if I was going to cut that cross member I would try and remake the same cross member higher up um, just yeah like I say to keep the, keep the strength in it these cross members in the car are, are there for a reason so um, yeah pasted to it I know I've my other personal cars I've done it before and, and not rebuilt it um, which that car's got a roll cage so it sort of doesn't really matter too much there but best practice is just to always try and replicate what was there so <clears throat> so yeah first it will be um, marking and measuring what I want and then cutting it out uh, I know from that that dent where the flanges hit I know sort of roughly um, where I need to raise it up so it's not going to be too hard to, um, to get a measurement of how high I need to go if the difference in the car it'd be easy because then you can cut it out and, and see where the flange is sitting but in this case Obviously the car's all stripped out, so um, I might have to just use a bit of imagination of where the diff is, um, but that's not too bad in this anyway. If you've watched my videos on my 626, um, I've run through a bunch of this on that car actually as well, but I thought there might be a few of you who haven't seen it, so um, the method I use for, for cutting this out, um, ignore the fact that it's, that it's not factory, but the same thing's going to apply, so what I really like to do um, don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I find makes it nice and easy. Um, when I'm when I cut the tunnel out, um, I always cut with the grinder in this direction, and always cut in a straight line, um, rather than cutting down here and cutting along. The reason being is if you cut if you cut just out in that direction, what you find is when you look from above that 
the line you've actually cut will actually vary and waver in relation to all the different ripples and, and whatnot. So I find by cutting it directly straight down, you get left that straight line and then it makes it really easy to fold a piece that'll fit in the hole. So um, it doesn't always work that way, sometimes you got to do it a bit different, but uh, I find that way it just, yeah, it just makes it really easy when you um, try to make the patch. Cutting is always easy and filling in the hole is the harder part so you might as well um, do what do what you can when you're cutting it to make to make um, the panel you're going to put in make it easy so always sort of think ahead um, rather than just going gung ho and cutting into it if you actually put a little bit of thought it makes the end job just that little bit easier to achieve and and look a bit better um, I'll, it'll, the replacement I put will look very similar to that but I'll probably put a bit of bead rolling in it to make it look a bit nicer even though it'll never be seen but um, just just a nice little touch that doesn't really do bugger all to be honest it just looks good so there is a I suppose a little bit of strength but the scheme of it it's probably probably zero um, like I said obviously I can see where it was hitting so that's the area I've got to, got to worry about um, so I'll probably be cutting, well, I'm not sure, I haven't measured too far yet, but cutting up around here somewhere and um, cutting right out and I'll, and I'll do it to the same point on there um, when I did this I'm pretty sure that the car was complete so hence why I sort of um, I don't really go too hard with the grinder cleaning things up and, and, um, and grinding some welds back because I was too worried about getting grinding dust all through the car so now that the car's empty I'll, um, I'll go hard and I'll clean all this up, there's actually a quite a few holes that have been drilled at some point um, they need to weld up so we'll tidy this all up and make it look good and I've actually right there got the, got the last bit of body seal to get off which is oh, sorry um, sound ending to get off so I need to get rid of that it's the last stubborn bit another thing to think about um, in cutting these is just to take a look underneath and see what's there uh, a lot of times there will be a bit of a cross member in here somewhere um, or sometimes the handbrake brackets are quite often, oh, usually maybe not here, but usually up here, but more the sort of mounted in the bottom or in the, the top. Um, but in this car, it's, it's fine. So um, good to go, just cut up as I need. So it will likely be the same. I'll just cut down here a bit further. see it's all cut out and ground up ready to go now if you cut like I've just said here where you're um, you're cutting on quite an angle to the sheet steel by cutting straight down so you really need to make sure you just grind the top of the slip down because these end up being quite really thin where you've cut it um, just simply because you're cutting on an edge so you sort of want to get rid of that um, that bit of a burr so just by grinding the top of that away it, it gives you something well gives you the total thickness to weld to so always make sure you do that um, you might notice I didn't actually mark out anything uh, if the tunnel was factory I would have had to mark out where to cut but because I was just cutting the old piece away um, it already had straight lines to follow so I got away without doing it but yeah if you're going to start from, from factory you have to mark it out and just as simple as laying laying a ruler and, and some chalk or, or a um, scrub or something mark that straight edge um, yeah, like I said, you don't have to cut it straight, but uh, it's the way I like to do it, and I find it just makes making this this panel really easy. Um, I like to to try and keep rounded edges on things. Um, I think they'll be a lot nicer than than sharp edges, but you can do whatever you want. Um, all you really do is just just remember to, that you want to maintain the strength. Um, that's about it really other than that you just as long as you're fully welded in and it's out of at least the same thickness material or, or thicker if you can um, can't go too far wrong so I'll um, measure up and fold a piece to fit in there so 
for here to, to, to what I need to measure to, so I know what to make. I just need to measure the width of the hole and um, and the length. And the width is quite critical. You want it to be within a few mil. Um, I also do quite often once you cut it, just go along and measure a few spots, make sure it's roughly um, parallel. There is quite a bit of movement in the side of these, um, so if you if it's not bang on, you can always hammer them in a little bit. Um, but yeah, you want to get that th that width pretty close, um, and I always start the patch being a bit longer than it needs to be, and uh, always make sure that you, <laughs> you leave enough to fold down the sides. I've been caught it a couple of times where I was about five more short and <laughs> had to wear a little patch in, which sucks, but yeah, if you can do it right the first time, it's always good. see I've cut out a piece of steel that I'm going to make this tunnel out of. Um, don't worry about this this corner here, this piece of steel is oversized so it doesn't matter for this. Now you might see I've got my folder back out which in past videos I've said is junk <laughs> but probably half the reason I've never got rid of it is actually it's really good for folding these because it's it doesn't leave a sharp fold um, so it is quite good for what I want to do. Now I measured up the tunnel in the car and I know it needs to be 400 mil long, and the gap is 115 mil. So I need to draw out on here um, where it fold lines and um, and B rolling lines, and also where to cut it. Now, first thing you really need to do, or what I, I do anyway, is take a piece of scrap um, of the same thickness as, as you're using. Uh, I like to draw a couple of lines on it at a measured distance, doesn't matter what it is, um, and then just put it in your, in your folder you're using and fold it to the angle you want to get. Um, and from that then you'll be able to measure um, how much you actually gain in your piece by folding it. So then, I'll, I'll show you in a sec, but say for instance I fold it and then and it, and it gains 10 mil in a fold, I know that when I draw onto here, my fold lines, they need to be 10 mil narrower either side. So when I do fold it, the outside is the 115 I'm after. So I'll put the camera back on the tripod and I'll show you. I'll draw a couple of lines, measure it first, fold it and then measure again and it'll give me my give me my measurement I need to take off from the 115 to get to get that folded up nice. So as you can see, I uh, drew the line at 50 mil from this edge. Um, you can either use the edge or, or draw two, two lines like I said before. So I fold it on that line at 50 mil, and now if you set that down, I've already measured this, but and you measure from the table up to your to your to your edge, it's uh, it measures 54 mil. So what that means is that by folding it, I've gained four mil. So when I fold this up, if I do two angles I need to take away the 4 mil on this fold and the 4 mil on the other fold so um, so from the width, that width I want which is 115 I'll take away 8 mil and that'll give me my my two fold lines and then once I fold them I'll get back to exactly where I wanted. I'm going to mark this out now and what I always like to do is actually start from the center of the sheet so I'll, I'll measure up draw a center line and then I'll work to the left and to the right the reason being is um, when I fold the tunnel down, um, it's the sides that don't aren't critical because once I slip it in the car, I'll be tracing around and cutting them away. So we just need to make sure that the two sides are even, so we've got plenty of plenty of meat to cut away. So that's, that's what I do: draw a center line and work from there. I 
scribed that out, which is probably really faint on camera, um, and I've scribed out um, my bead roll lines. So uh, bead roll it first, and then fold it up. I made the mistake before of folding it first, and then <laughs> you can't get it in the bead roller. So always bead roll first, and then fold it up. Um, I really like to use a scriber rather than a, than a, a pen um, for that for this sort of stuff, just because you've got a definite line to, to be roll against or to fold against when you use a, a sharpie or especially older sharpies and they're a bit blunt um, you sort of the line you know the lines are a couple more thick so um, you're just never going to get it as accurate so scriber I think is always always the one to use so chuck that in the bead roller and then fold it up and then should be good to try a slot in the hole slip that piece in place it's a pretty good fit uh, just need to mark out a bit for where to cut it uh, so actually first I need to do a little bit of trimming so it can sit exactly where it needs to go I want to slide it a little bit further forward so just so that um, that bead roll piece is sort of sitting center as you can see it's right up against the back there and there's a big gap so I'll trim a little bit around it and then stick it back in place and then once I've got it sitting where I want at the front at the back then I can come and uh, mark along the body line there and cut that away so there's no overhang and weld in. So as you can see I just drew the lines there where the original body is so I'll um, cut it with the tin snips say 5-10mm down from that line just to give a bit of overlap and then uh, should be ready to tack in. So that's all ready to go, uh, going to tack weld it in and then fully weld it. Uh, I'll just be mug welding this. Um, like I said in some previous videos I just like to use whatever process I think is suitable and for this thing um, mug welding to me is the, is the option. You can tack weld it if you want to but it's going to take a lot longer, be a lot harder and to be honest pointless in my opinion, mug welding is the way to go. Uh, my little MIG that I've got, I run 0.6mm wire, which is quite small, but it's really good for thin panel steel and, and sort of 3mm and below. Uh, yeah, I've got a little Lincoln that does real good on this sort of stuff. Um, you might notice when I'm welding on panel steel, I, d I don't really continuous weld, or do sort of a lot of, lot of spot welds. Um, it's mainly because I sort of have the welder set a little bit hotter than you normally would, and if I continuously weld, it'll burn through, but... I prefer to run it hotter and then and then do a lot of stop starts rather than having it cold um, and being able to do a long run. Um, obviously, that's not the technique you do for anything else, but I find for panel steel that's it's a really good really good option. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go tack it all in and then weld it up. Um, I like to put quite a few tacks just to make sure all the gaps between the original body and the new piece are all are all um, closed up as much as you can. And then yeah, weld it all in. I'll also weld it all from the top here there won't be any welding from underneath the car but once it's all done i'll, I'll tidy up underneath there i'll just put a couple of tacks in that from the top side and 
I'll flip this over to have a look. Um, obviously if you haven't got it on rotisserie you have to just get underneath but it's still doable. So what I'm going to do from under here is just, um, just with a hammer just, just beat this down a little bit and beat that one up um, just to take up the gap. It's pretty minimal everywhere but just a few little spots where it um, just needs to be brought down. Um, you can sort of see pretty good, pretty good cut around here for just a little bit of overhang and a little bit more up here but um, once it's welded I can come and trim any excess away from there um, and then I won't do it, if I was just doing just that I would um, primer it and underseal it and everything while I'm here but and it won't seam seal it but because I'll be doing the whole body that'll wait till everything else gets done um, you see up here this is uh, what I had to do to put the J160 where the gear that comes out um, I did this with the gearbox in place so there was no room and I couldn't get back under here to tidy it all up so um, looks rough, it looks pretty crusty um, obviously I'd never painted it or primed it but it's just what I did without pulling the engine gearbox out so now that it's all here I'll, I'll tidy this up um, make it look nice while I'm there what you can do if you're finding um, some gaps that are hard to close up or hard to push up just by beating with a hammer you can just get a block of wood or something just wedge it in there just to push these out um, you, even though you will be sort of welding it under tension for, for what this is it won't, it won't matter at all um, just closing up the gaps is the key really gonna get the grinder and knock off some of the highs and some of the ugly bits and give it a wire wheel and then flip the car over dress up underneath there and then it's all done pretty happy with it just ready to be primed and sealed up and the whole body gets done uh, hope that was helpful hopefully it encourages a few of you to go and chop your cars up make them low we all know low cars are cool so get out there and hack it up uh, a few more things left to do just little stuff and then uh, a bit of panel beating and the crap job of just wire wheeling and sanding and getting rid of all the, all the junk on it uh, not a job I'm looking forward to but it's got to be done so all good um, Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, look out for the next one.